Creating a sequel to a popular video game comes with a certain degree of apprehension, and when it comes to the third game in the franchise, there can either be the return to form after a big misstep, or where everything falls apart completely. I'm Sai for WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 worst number 3s in gaming history. Number 10, Doom 3. The kindest thing you can say about Doom 3 is that it handily filled in the dunked column for future Doom developers. For example, don't slow down the pace of the action to the point where playing Bridge is a more exciting alternative. Don't give the job of redesigning Doom's iconic bestiary to someone whose paint palette only contains the colour brown. Don't copy paste these same gunmetal grey corridors over and over again when people talk about Doom games being metal, they aren't being literal. And don't reconfigure the weapon audio to the point where every gun sounds like a discount Kmart version of its Doom one and two equivalent. If you've ever wanted to know what a farting light bulb would sound like, try firing Doom 3's plasma rifle. Suffice it to say, 2016's excellent Doom reboot succeeded largely by going in the exact opposite direction of its predecessor. So thank you Doom 3 for being a necessary dead end in the roadmap of gaming evolution. Doom with a more horror edge isn't necessarily a bad concept, but nah chief, this ain't it. Number 9, Master of Orion 3. The subgenre of strategy video games known as 4X, which stands for Explore, Expand, Exploit and Exterminate, was coined with the release of Master of Orion. The first game was good and the second game was great, coming out in 1996 to much acclaim. It was seen as the king of the 4X space genre and when its sequel was released in 2003, many expected the latter to take the predecessor's crown. To put it simply, that didn't happen. Buggy, broken and with an interface that actively thwarted any attempts to enjoy the game on its own merits, Master of Orion 3 sounded the death knell for a once admired series. The 4 act genre is in an okay space right now, with the likes of Galactic Civilization, Stellaris and Endless Space providing countless hours of entertainment for interstellar would-be dictators, but Master of Orion, the series that started it all, appears destined to remain on its deathbed forevermore because of this game. Number 8, Assassin's Creed 3. Before Assassin's Creed transmogrified into an action RPG, the series followed the old Star Trek movie rule. The even entry numbers were great, the odd numbered ones not so much. Now to be fair, of all the games on this list, Assassin's Creed 3 is the least objectively terrible. There is some entertainment to be had, but it's mostly contained in the game's opening hours. After spending time with the Dasham Haytham Kenway, gamers are unceremoniously thrust into the role of Connor, his moody, unlikable son, and Haytham himself turns out to be a complete hole as well, making AC3's cast the least likeable in series history. The shift to Connor also coincides with a ludicrous level of feature creep as Assassin's Creed 3 mixes its tale of revenge and obsession in revolutionary America with such riveting tasks as hunting woodland animals and building a farm. It was content for content's sake, with the end result being a bloated mess that ensured the first Assassin's Creed trilogy ended on a bum note. Number 7, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. It's kind of hard to call Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts a threequel for a few reasons. Firstly, it came way later than the first two, was released by a different publisher, and bucked the trend from Kazooie and 2E by not calling itself 3E. Also, of course, it feels more like a different IP with the bear and bird just slapped haphazardly onto it. Despite not being on the same worldwide notoriety level as the likes of Mario and Crash Bandicoot, Banjo-Kazooie has always been in the conversation as a mascot of 3D platformers. Both his N64 outings are stone cold classics and fans clamoured for a long time for another. Instead, when Microsoft bought developers Rare, the next Banjo title was a bizarre open world driving game where players build contraptions out of blocks and explored a big, open, boring environment. Not only were the great level designs and tight familiar controls gone, replaced with the most random and out of nowhere concept imaginable, Nuts and Bolts had the gall to mock the previous, much more beloved entries and the people who liked them by saying that it was what gamers wanted in the modern day. No, no it was not. Number 6, Earthworm Jim 3D. Even now, some 25 years removed from Earthworm Jim's fall from grace, the speed of the franchise's decline is staggering. Back in the mid-90s, Earthworm Jim was in the respectable position of the B player underneath Sonic and Mario as video game mascots. A brace of excellent Mega Drive games led to a delightfully surreal cartoon of which Earthworm Jim 3D was supposed to tie into. However, due to being trapped in development hell, Earthworm Jim 3D didn't come out until 1999, three years after the cartoon had stopped airing. This meant the game 
had to stand on its own merits, of which there were precious few. As well as containing nearly every irritant common to 3D platformers, murderously unhelpful camera, cumbersome controls, and pointless collectibles, Upworm Jim 3D suffers from a criminal lack of imagination. Previous games in the series kept you interested by transporting Jim from one bizarre scenario to the next. By comparison, Upworm Jim 3D's bland, ugly levels that all culminated exactly the same god-awful boss fights were poor fare for dedicated fans of the franchise. Still, it wasn't the worst game to make the jump to 3D. Number 5. Bubsy 3D if Earthworm Jim stumbled into the third dimension, then Bubsy tripped, fell down a flight of stairs, and stabbed its eyes out on one of the game's many flat, textureless polygons. Now, to be fair to the developers, no one was expecting miracles from Bubsy 3D. Bubsy had been not good on the Super Nintendo, he'd been not good on the Jaguar, and as anyone with access to a crystal ball at the time would have known, he would continue to be not good on the PS4. So it's safe to say expectations weren't high when Bubsy 3D came out. Having said all that, by God did the resulting game manage to limbo under the impossibly low bar set for it. Working with a new dimension must have been taxing for the developers, yes, but we can't comprehend the thought process that led to, in a genre that necessitates quick reactions and ease of movement, the choice to go with tank controls as the means to control Bubsy. Watching the eponymous Bobcat slowly twist, turn, and fumble his way through levels that had less cohesion than a two-year-old Duplo playset didn't exactly fit with the PlayStation's image as the console it was called to own. Bubsy soon found himself sliding off the island of relevancy and into the the abyss of forgotten franchises. Number 4. Spider-Man 3 the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy and its tie-in games followed remarkably similar patterns. A solid, if flawed, first entry, a genuinely great sequel, and a disappointing mess of a threequel. Actually, that undersells just how bad the Spider-Man 3 game actually was. The movie had its moments, but any joy from its video game equivalent is strictly unintentional. Infamous is Spider-Man face-planting after a failed quick-time event causing the bug-eyed NPC to declare in a bizarrely sing-song voice, I'm going to die, before immediately exploding. It's hilarious, but we're not quite sure that's the reaction the developers were aiming for. Everything about Spider-Man 3 makes its excellent predecessor seem like a fluke. Combat was a quick time event heavy mess, the subpar graphics and animation felt cheap, and the abysmal overly long boss fight had gamers wistfully reminiscing over Spider-Man 2's infamous One Punch Mysterio battle. Honestly, a rhythm action game focusing on the exploits of emo Peter Parker would have been a more entertaining use of the license. Number 3. Postal 3 it's one thing when a reviewer tells you not to buy a game, it's something else entirely when the people involved in making it beg you to save your money. Postal 3 may have been published by Running With Scissors, creators of the first two titles, but it was actually created by a Russian development team who Running With Scissors outsourced the project to. Needless to say, this decision didn't end well for anyone involved, hence Postal's original developers begging their fans to ignore the third entry in the series. We can see their point, as Postal 3 has no end of game design atrocities for critics to wax lyrical about. There's the pathetic stabs at humour, this is a game that thinks the concept of Mexican Japanese cuisine is a joke in and of itself, the tedious corridor heavy level design that makes Wolfenstein 3D look like Halo, or the AI that ensures every enemy acts like a dumbed down version of Serious Sam's headless kamikazes. And of course there's the other one teensy problem, to actually play the game you need to download a fan made patch because the developers never bothered to fix the game's broken DRM. And frankly they were doing us all a favour. Number 2. Driver 3 in Driver 3, or Driv 3 -er, as it's written, it's possible to come across Timmy Vermicilli, a thinly veiled ripoff of Grand Theft Auto's Tommy Vercetti, protagonist of the sublime Vice City. It was a bold move for Driver 3 to mock its competition so openly, but as a wise man once said, you come at the king, you better not miss. Driver 3 didn't just miss, it backfired so badly it put its entire franchise in a tailspin from which it has yet to recover. You know a game is truly bad when its publishers have to bribe magazines with early code to guarantee good reviews and that's exactly what happened here. Sadly, the ploy worked as the game sold over 3 million copies which meant there were a lot of angry gamers around mid-2004. They had a lot to be angry about, in all fairness, outrageously unfair level design, utterly pathetic on-foot missions that made the aforementioned Postal 3 look like Gears of War, and horrendous amounts of popping meant Driver 3 spoiled many a gamer's summer holiday. Even the genuinely great Driver San Francisco couldn't escape the stench created by Driv 3 -er, with the result being that the series has stalled for over a decade. Number 1. Dino Crisis 3 
Dino Crisis 3, how do I hate thee? Let's me count the ways. I hate thee for thy camera most dire, which oft forced my character to expire. As it hid the foes I was tasked to slay, I hate thee for being so dull to play. Making me a most unhappy buyer as I waded through your wretched quagmire. Before I did quince and call it a day, no more could I enjoy each banal task. No more steely corridors could I trapeze, searching for a shred of joy in which to bask. Oh Capcom, Capcom, what have you wrought? Full oft have I wished to be face to face with the ones who made you so I may ask, how do you mess up dinosaurs in space? And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Which of these three calls did you hate the most? And of course, let us know of any others that we didn't include. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Head over to whatculture.com for more content every day. I've been Cy for What Culture, and have a good week.